All right. Hello, everybody. Glenn here, and uh, welcome to Palm Springs, California. Um, chilly Palm Springs. I'm here um, at the 2016 Dev Summit, and I've got uh, Bern Sikalski hey with me from Esri. Um, Bern, you want to? Uh, we're going to go for a little drive and talk about a couple things that are that are hot. Um, I want to start by. Uh, Maybe you want to share what your what your role is with the company. I'm a, a uh, actually I've been around Esri for a really long time. Yeah. Uh, so this is year thirty for me, wrapping up year thirty. Wow. And uh, every year is just uh, more and more exciting. Um, I'm a tech evangelist for Esri, and work on uh, special projects, uplift products, and interesting things like that. Okay. I know. I know that if. If it has to do with RTS on, on, online and uh, story maps in particular, is a passion of yours. Yep. You're kind of your go-to guy for for that space. Um, and you briefly mentioned when we were getting ready here, you were talking about so GeoHub is something that uh, is is hot and of interest. Want to tell us about that? Yeah. So I think this concept of a of a hub, an organizational hub, is really interesting. So lots of organizations have a need to collaborate with each other. We just um, finished up a, a project for Los Angeles. So the city of Los Angeles wanted to organize a bunch of other organizations together so that they could have the data, the authoritative content, the apps that they needed to accomplish their own respective pieces of, uh, of work. So the concept, I, I kind of um, think of it as an organization of organizations. So an ArcGIS Online organization, whether it's on-premises or in the cloud, is uh, kind of its own entity. And there are strong needs for organizations to work closely together, maybe underneath a master umbrella organization. So in the case of LA, it's the city of LA with different component organizations. Um, some of these hubs could be spontaneous, like a hurricane hits the East Coast and you need to get Sussex County, New Jersey, the state of New Jersey, FEMA, city of New York. They need to kind of organize and create a little hub and get together to accomplish some things. So I think it's a really strong concept and one that we're working on pretty hard and is evolving pretty rapidly. I think that's really, really interesting. Oh, so collaboration, it's, um, you know, it's kind of, I, I guess in a simpler form, I'm thinking like what Slack does and everybody, you know, you create your teams and your channels. Sure. But, uh, yeah, I can see even a city like mine, I'm in Victoria and we we're a small city relatively like 300,000, but there's, I think 14 local governments there. So it's, yeah, I, communicating is brittle. I, I think to me, it's the, the sum of the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. So as individual kind of entities, uh, there's value in that, but when you can kind of bring it all together and work together to solve problems, that's what really makes it valuable. Sure. Okay, so um, let me ask you about story maps. And there, there's more and more templates all the time. And I believe uh, you mentioned to me some like 3D templates. Sure. I, actually, the 3D templates are part of our configurable apps uh, landscape. Of course, Story Maps is one of those configurable apps, but uh, these are some of the built-in apps which uh, you'll find in the Create a Web App Gallery. And uh, we've added three uh, 3D templates that are designed to work with scenes. One is sort of a simple viewer for scenes. Another one allows you to compare two or more scenes side by side, so you can look at maybe different uh, geo design scenarios. And a third is kind of interesting where it lets you take your data and it uh, kind of automatically extrudes it and lets you look at it on a 3D map. So those are three new ones. Um, story maps are always evolving too. We're coming out with a new long-awaited Cascade uh, story map coming up at the UC. Uh, for this release, we just did some uh, little minor things that I think are very important. One of the ones is we now support autoplay on most of the story map apps, which is kind of neat. So you can maybe use it as a kiosk in a museum or a visitor center. We have some emergency operation centers that we're really excited about this and that they could kind of use it as a part of their command and control operations and kind of advance from tab to tab or map to map within a story map to kind of keep abreast of what's going on. So I think that was a really good improvement. And you, you don't really, you don't have to be a coding genius to really customize these these you know, things uh, that much either. Do you? you know, that to me that's the most exciting thing. So I used to do a bit of coding in my day, but I don't do so much anymore. And I think what's really happened is that uh, we've been able to make these really interesting configurable applications that do really great things, and you don't have to write code to get them to work. You can configure them. 
course, at a conference like this, that's always interesting because everyone's thinking about coding and it certainly doesn't diminish the importance or the need for that. But for a lot of organizations, having a configurable app is really sustainable and really easy and cost-effective way to get things done. Sure. Yeah. I know I um, there's some consultants in my town that I know quite well, and they had a... Uh, uh, the need to do something, but they didn't have a lot of budget for it, you yeah. know, and it was a big you know, visible project. I turned them on to Story Maps, like, why aren't you using this for, for what you're, you know, for what you're doing? Yeah, Story Maps, and, and, uh, it was amazing. It, Story Maps made a huge difference for so many people, and uh, not only are they easy, but they're really effective and powerful ways to communicate. Uh, we use them actually to communicate about our technology. Lots of businesses are using it. There's some really interesting uh, uses. Just did a blog post not long ago about nine things you didn't think you could do with story maps, which highlights some of the some of the kind of the different ways that you can use it that people might not think of. But they've been really powerful communication tools for lots of folks. Sure. It's funny you mentioned uh, blog, and I know you actually you maintain a blog for the company too, which I find like don't you? You're like that's you that blogs periodically. And... Actually, I, I, I don't so much maintain it, but I do do quite a lot of blogging. Mm -hmm. But a lot of that is after I meet some people at a conference, they might ask a question or be puzzled about how to do something, and that that's my next blog post. Sure. And uh, I think the thing I really enjoy about that is when someone asks me a question, I can answer it by firing a link to one of those, and right. I think uh, that's where I get most of my ideas. <laughs> it makes sense. I think that's how I got into running a blog uh, about 18 years ago. So, good. Um, all right, so you know what? We've got a minute or two left. You want to keep this a reasonable length? Is there uh, is there something else you want to share share with us this week? Um, hmm, that's a good yeah, question. I know there's a lot going on. Yeah, there's just so, so Dev much Summit to... just opened up today. If you're wondering, and we're um, Burn and the crew just had the uh, partner partners conference over the weekend. Actually, there is something really interesting that uh, came up at the Fed GIS which I think is, uh, we're actually going to release the product at the user conference, and that's something called drone to map And that leverages drone technology and lets you do some really amazing things with it. When you think about it, there's so many different application areas for this. I'm really fired up and excited about drone to map just because I see so many different potential use cases in agriculture, for law enforcement, for, um, you know, managing... Yeah. Uh, crops and assets uh, remotely, um, gaining those high resolution photographs that you need, applying analysis capabilities of that, and I think there's just some amazing potential there for so many uh, different types of applications that can be driven uh, by this interface between drones and, and ArcGIS. So I think that's going to be a really hot ticket this year. Uh, and so are Insights. We introduced that at uh, the Fed GIS, and uh, Insights for ArcGIS is, uh, is a new product. Um, new application and it kind of uses the concept of cards that you lay out on a page and uh, the cards are connected so you can connect a map to a graph and you can do uh, interactive uh, analytics to query data and uh, the graphs and the maps are all linked together so it's a really uh, interesting visual way to gain well insights about your data I think that, that'll be really interesting as well to see that evolve this year okay. yeah you can't you can have a too much in the way of analytics, and people uh, need that. Right, and we all need some good insights, though. <laughs> <laughs> Never hurts. It's funny the, the drone to map. I was uh, speaking to the the Esri staffer on the island, a woman there, um, who was talking about drone to map, and I mentioned her. I remember when the your official kind of announcement, the PR announcement about it, and I ran that on GS User. And when I was looking at my analytics recently, it that actually that story was was by far the most popular viewed uh, item of the year so far on our site, so people are excited about that technology. Yeah, I, I sense this tidal wave of interest just coming up on the horizon, and I think it's going to be important for many different types of applications. It'll be really cool. Good. All right. Well, I guess we'll leave it off there, even though we could probably talk another 20 minutes, but uh, so thanks for the time. My pleasure. And uh, thanks to my sponsors from EchoSec. Got to give these guys a shout out. They've got a good, uh, they're uh, part of the small business uh, partner. It's not a startup group with Esri, and they've got a great app, so check them oh, out oh, at echosec.net. Did you hit that cat? Did you hit that cat? No, I guess not. <laughs> but we'll, and actually you can use echosec, and you can find all the uh, um, social media, um, geotag social media tweets that are, and uh, media that are coming out of the conference here, so check that out.